will you just leave Brother Unfurl alone and let him sing his songs? So we thank uh, the choir again and the musicians for aiding and helping us and urging us to the throne of grace this morning. Scripture reading will be coming from the book of Luke. Your word 
says that you will add unto Spring Hill daily. Let one come down the aisle saying, what must I do to be saved? In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I never shall forget what you done for me. That's a popular song. What well, used to be nowadays, that's a jam. You know, after a popular song gets a little old, it becomes our jam. <laughs> Something we turn back to and we get, hey, we remember. Pepping our step and get inspiration and encouragement, a little energy. So that's a jam. Now, never shall forget what you've done <laughs> for me. In scripture this morning, we have Jesus taking time out with his disciples, teaching them and those that would have an ear to hear. Jesus teaches two great lessons at the beginning of uh, Luke 17. Uh, two great lessons in preaching, and this is preached and taught in every Christian church, in every Christian home. And before we come to our scripture this morning, Jesus, we realize Jesus teaches us about the rich man and Lazarus. Lazarus was in need and no one would help him. Lazarus was in bad shape and had sores all over his body. It hurt if you touched him. Lazarus was in a, a, a medical, need of medication. Lazarus needed medical help. Lazarus, Lazarus needed a, a physical help. Lazarus needed inspiration to help him get through what he was going through. Don't miss this now. The focus began on Lazarus. The focus then turned to the rich man when Lazarus just required the crumbs from the rich man's right. table. Lazarus needed a whole lot of help. And the only thing he wanted was for his hunger uh, to be satisfied. Uh, he wanted just the crumbs off the rich man's table, and yet the rich man could not even give him that which he would throw away. A matter of fact, Luke testifies that the dogs had more compassion on Lazarus than the rich man did. All right. uh, for they came and, 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 and licked his sores. They did all they can do to comfort Lazarus. Lazarus was in bad shape, Spring Hill. All right. Yet, when both died, uh, the rich man's financial privilege did not save him. All right. For when Lazarus died, he was carried away to the bosom of Abraham, according to the Bible. And the rich man, when he died, he opened up his eyes and found himself in the in a, in a, in a bitter pits of hell. He, he found himself uh, looking upon something that he was lacking. When he opened his eyes, he saw Compassion. He saw the compassion of Father Abraham consoling this once Lazarus on earth that needed everything. Realizing his condition, he, he did in his uh, arrogance. Still, he, he didn't bother to ask Lazarus. He asked Abraham, Abraham, can you send Lazarus over here and just dip his finger in water to quench my tongue, my thirst? And, and, and Abraham said, no. And then once again, he said, well, I'm stuck in my condition. I'm, there's nothing I can do to change my condition. Can you at least send, in his arrogance, Lazarus to go back and tell my brother? I don't want them to awaken my condition. Father Abraham's answer was no and no. We are to think about this story when we have a closet full of clothes we don't wear anymore, and yet we pass those in need. We ought to think about this story when we have excess uh, and people are in need. We ought to think about this story when we will, uh, when we come to a time where we know uh, we, we have a father and that our father looks upon our actions and, and he asks us, where did you feed me? Where did you clothe me? When did you give me a word of comfort? Somebody said, move on, brother preacher, move on. 
Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and move on, but, but one of these days I'm going to stay right that. there. And, and some of us uh, realize some of us have possession and people in our lives that we don't appreciate. We have spouses that we don't appreciate, but somewhere somebody is praying for a husband. Somewhere somebody is praying for, for a wife. We, we, we have jobs we don't appreciate, but somewhere somebody has lost their job. And they're praying to the same God that blessed us to bless them. We have houses and, and cars we don't appreciate, but, but someone is praying for a house. Someone is praying for transportation. We have parents, young people, that we don't appreciate. Parents that we think that are mean, but somewhere some little boy, some little girl is, is hoping that mama will come back and hoping that daddy is right. there, hoping that daddy would love them, hoping that, that mama would be there. We have food to eat and clothes to wear that we don't appreciate. Somebody somewhere is praying for the crumbs yes. off our blessed table. Somebody said, you better move on, brother preacher. I'll move on. <laughs> Finally, before we get to our text this morning, Jesus teaches on forgiveness. In this teaching, Jesus uh, teaches both uh, those who, who want to have a ear and know the truth, both the human and the, the Christian truth about forgiveness. What are you talking about, Brother T Preacher? When it comes to both the human and the Christian truth as it relates to forgiveness, truth is it's getting hard sometimes to forgive people. Oh, what you mean? What you mean, Brother Preacher? Look at what Jesus teaches. Jesus says that if your brother or friend offends you, rebuke him. Rebuke her. And if he repents, simply forgive him and forgive her. I don't know about you, but, but I know for myself, I can almost forgive anybody for almost doing anything one time. That, that, that's the human truth. Can, can, can I be human? All right. Paul, says, Paul says, I speak as a man, and he told the human truth about his condition. It, it, it's, it's easier to forgive somebody one time for one thing they've done. Oh, but Jesus gets down in the teaching. He teaches us, uh, uh, he says, if your brother offends you seven times in one day and repents seven times, uh, uh, Brother Banks, in one day, we ought to forgive him. We ought to forgive her. And then watch this, don't, don't miss this. The apostle then responded and said, uh, Lord Jesus, <laughs> increase our faith. <laughs> It is there that lies the Christian truth. It's hard to keep forgiving people time after time after time. It's hard to keep forgiving the same folks for doing the same thing over and over and over. And just like the apostle, we need to ask Jesus to increase our faith until we get there. All right. All right. Watch this now. Jesus then compares your trespass, my trespass. Jesus then compares our hurt. Jesus then uh, compares our anger when our brother offends us, our sister offends us. Jesus then compares our embarrassment when our children offend us doing what they do. Jesus then compares our frustration to that of a sycamine tree deeply rooted in the earth. Now, now, uh, a lot of people do the do, do the research, and it wasn't a sycamine tree. It's it's much much like a, a mulberry tree that has fruit, just like figs. Watch this now. The key here is not that that the tree what the tree resembles, but but it's it's about the fruit. Uh, your your tree of hurt, your your tree of anger, your your tree of uh, of embarrassment, your tree of frustration, brothers and sisters, will bear. Amen. Fruit. <laughs> Ephesians 4 said, Be ye angry and not sin. Let not the sun go upon your route. Go down upon your neither give place to the devil. Jesus did compare your faith when it comes to forgiveness to the size of a mustard seed. Jesus teaches those that have an ear uh, that your faith can move personal hurdles in your life. Forgiveness depends on you and your faith. Personal hurdles. Jesus uh, teaches those that have an ear that your faith can move these hurdles. Can, move, can remove the, the hurdles that keep you from, from acting on the commands of God. Jesus teaches you that, uh, that, that you can say to your personal insecurities, uh, get over that mountain. Get out of my life. 
He teaches that you can say to your frustration, get out of me. Get out. Get, get, get over that mountain. Get out of my life. He teaches you that you can tell, tell your personal hang-ups, that those things that are deep-rooted in your heart, get out of my life. Get out of my way. No more. All right. Would I let past hurt keep me from acting on the commands of God? Jesus teaches that you don't have to remain the same. All right. You can get up. You can clean your house. And you can show enough change. You can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. Jesus teaches both of the rich man and Lazarus. Jesus teaches faith and forgiveness. And now Jesus comes to our scripture this morning. I know y'all felt like I was closing. <laughs> Jesus comes to our scripture this morning. Point one. Jesus can touch you between places. I might just throw this thing off in, 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 in the pew somewhere. Because this, this is, I, oh Lord help me. Settle me down. Uh, uh, Luke 17 and 11 says, And it came to pass as he went through Jerusalem, or some of you might read it as Jerusalem, and that, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. <laughs> Scripture says Jesus was passing through uh, Jerusalem, somewhere between Samaria and Galilee. And he heard between those two points ten lepers. Scripture says Jesus was passing through Je uh, Jerusalem between a place where many avoided. Jesus said, I must go through Samaria. Y'all right. y'all, y'all read that, right? And a place where many wanted to go. Jesus was from what? Galilee. Often Jesus meet, meets and touches us between where we shouldn't be and where we should be. What are, you, what are you talking about, brother preacher? Since the beginning of time, the Trinity, the God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost has been catching us between where we shouldn't be and where we should be. Since the beginning of time, the, the Trinity has been catching us between what we shouldn't do and what we should do. Yes. They, they caught Abraham, Adam and Eve between guilt and shame, amen? They caught Abraham between fear and faith. They caught Moses between uh, uh, living a life of comfortability, living a life of conformity to that of uh, obedience to God. They caught Job between enjoying the blessings of God and trying to uh, pray his children to the faith of God. They caught the three Hebrew boys between worship a king and worshiping a God. Uh, they caught Jeremiah between closing his Bible and packing his religion up and, and, and the point of keep on Keeping on. They call Ezekiel between the now and his now and, and our future. They talk, they call Jonah between anger and submission. Uh, they, they call David between triumph as a king, triumph as a boy, and humility. They call the woman at the well between thirst and living water. They call, call the man in the tomb between insanity and clothes in his right mind. They call Peter, James, and John between a dot of All emptiness right. to a dot of, 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 of abundance. They caught the sick man between a bed slung down from a roof and, 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 and being made whole in front of the feet of our Jesus. And they caught Paul between the doctrines of men All right. and the true message of God. Don't think this is something that the Trinity has done in the past and don't think this is something only the Trinity do in biblical times, but this is something that the Trinity is doing for us right now and, and will keep on doing for our children. They caught some of us between drunkenness and sobriety. They, 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 they caught some of us between gambling and, and financial responsibilities. They, they caught some of us from trying to get high and, and getting high and being filled by the Holy Ghost. Uh, they caught some of us between violence and safety. Uh, some of us between unemployment and employment. Walking down somebody's street, they caught some of us between need and, and abundance. They caught some of us between our personal storms in our life and a place of peace. They caught some of us between loss and losing everything and, and God rewarding us. They caught some of us between cancer and the cure. And they caught some of us between giving up and our finish line. All right. There's no secret. What God can do. What he's done for others. He sure not do for you. God will not stop being God. Through the storm. Through your rain. God will not 
uh, uh, stop being God through your sickness, through your God will not stop being God. God loves you, and you can't nothing you do about it. And it is in this, this catching we learn uh, more about ourselves and we learn more about God's love for you and I. And it's because of this catching, I personally will never forget yes. what God has done for me. If I have to praise him this morning by myself, believe me, I don't mind snatching out my toupee and throwing it out there in the audience. <laughs> Point two, get this now, point two, the outside. Verse 16 says, and, and, and the man, the leopard, the one that turned back, fell down on his face and at his feet, giving him thanks. And, and he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered and said, where are the ten that were cleansed? And we only have this one. Only one turned back to give God the glory. The Bible makes it clear that until you have a personal encounter with Jesus Christ, you're just on the outside looking in. I, I, I hate, I hate to uh, let you know that right. you can call his name, but he can say, depart from me. I know you're not. That, that's the hard truth. If, if you think just because you come to church and you don't have to read your Bible, well, guess what? You can call his name, but he won't know you. <laughs> That, that, that's the truth that some people need to hear. It ain't no, uh, what my grandpa say, a play pretty. I don't know if y'all use that word around here. That, that's country word. It ain't nothing that you play with. Those that attend Bible study know that the Bible makes it both clear in Matthew 13 and in Mark uh, chapter 4 when, when, when asked uh, Jesus, why do you speak to them in parables? Jesus' reply to his disciples was that to you, the insider, is given. Uh, to you, the ones who have their names written down in the Lamb's Book of Life, is given. To you that have confessed with your mouth and believe in your heart the Lord Jesus Christ and that our God the Father has raised him from it is given. Uh, to you the ones who know my voice, to you the one uh, that are the believer, it is given. But to those who don't know me as their Savior, All right. to those who don't know me in the pardon of their sins, <laughs> to, to those that don't know me and know my Father as a God that sits high and looks no low, Jesus says of them that here they don't hear. He says about them, they see and they don't see. Therefore, they don't understand the mystery, every mystery that, that, that pertains to the kingdom of God. They see it with their own eyes, but they don't see what's going on. They, they, they hear it with their own ears, but they don't hear what's going on. And, and if they can't see and hear it, they can't comprehend, they can't understand. What are you talking about, brother preacher? This is why they don't understand why, why you're happy uh, when you cry. They, they, they hear you cry. They, they see the tears run down the face, yet they don't understand uh, why you have a smile on your face. They are the, From the outside, they're, they're only looking in. They, they don't understand how you step out on faith and how you call the utility company. They know you don't have no money in the bank. They hear you say, uh, I, I, it'll be paid by the 15th. Don't worry about it. Keep it on. They, they, they know you don't have good credit. They know you can't get a loan. They hear you say it. They hear you do it. But they don't understand how the Lord will make a way. All right. Somehow. They, they see you walk up to a car lot acting like you own the place. Know that your credit is shot. Know that you don't have the money for a down payment. They see you walk up there like you own the place. Like you're going to pay cash for the car. God sent you to the lot. They see you walking there. They see you pick out the car and the color you want. They see it. They're like, oh, Lord, why did I drive her up here? Why did I drive? I know they ain't got no money. They, going, they don't understand. They see you pick out the car you want because God sent you there. But they don't understand how that salesman come out and say, sir, ma'am, we're celebrating our 50th anniversary here at this car lot, and you happen to be the 50th customer, and we're giving that car away that you get picked out. The Lord will. They don't understand how he is Jehovah Jireh. He is my provider. They, they don't understand the, the, the mysteries pertaining to the kingdom of God. If, if we're honest with ourselves today, we have to acknowledge that we were not born saved. Songwriter said mama and big mama had a drug problem. 
They had a drug problem because they drug him to church every Sunday. <laughs> and if it wasn't, uh, if we were, if we wasn't born saved, if, if it hadn't been for the faith of Mama and Big Mama, if it hadn't been for the faith of Daddy and, and Granddaddy, uh, we'd still be on the outside looking in. John 15 says, says, ye have not chosen me, <laughs> but you outside. I chose you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit, fruit shall, should remain that whosoever ye shall have, uh, all shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Uh -huh. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, well, would I be, if it had not been for the Lord on your side, where would you be? We were all, at one point in time in our life, on the outside, looking in. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you ever wonder why Mama kept praying for you <laughs> when you weren't acting right? You ever wonder why Mama didn't give up on you when you was a teenager, not acting right, thinking you know everything? You ever wonder why Daddy keep working for people who didn't, who didn't like him because of the color of his skin, because of how tall he was or, or his accent? You ever uh, wonder why Daddy kept swallowing his pride just so he could bring home a check to feed his family? God saw the best in us right. when the world saw the worst in us. God took me, this stranger who couldn't see his way, cleaned me up and called me his own child, called me in his family. I am now a child of God. I am now the son of a king. I am not loved beyond any measure. You better watch when they talk about me. You tell them, be careful. That there is a child of God. Be careful. His father is jealous. He don't take kindly to people picking on him. And if I see them, I tell them, be careful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a child of God. If, if anybody asks you who you are, you tell them first, I am. All right. When the world gave up on us, when the world refused to help us, he, he, he brought us in from dark places and became the, the light of our life. Uh, this is why I'm not an outsider anymore, and this is one of the reasons I never shall forget what he done for little old me. Sometimes, point three, sometimes it's not who he is, but what he does. <laughs> and, and I get happy on this. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Bible makes it plain. Uh, and, and the Bible is true in every word. That, that it's true that his name is above every name. It's true that he is. He rose with all power in heaven and earth. It is true that he is the rose of Sharon. It's true at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow. And, and the Lamb's book of life. It's true that he is the lamb that was slain. It's true that he is the Messiah. It is true he is the living water. It is true he is the chief cornerstone. It is true he is the one that sits on the right hand, the power hand of God. It is true that everything that is made was made by his hand. It is true that he is Jehovah Jireh, God our provider. It is true that he is Jehovah Rapha, God our healer. It is true that he is Jehovah Nisi, God our banner. It is true that he is Jehovah Shalom, God our peace. It is true he is Jehovah Sinekiu, God our righteousness. It is true he is Jehovah Shammah, God my ever present light. Yes. Yes. But even though I praise him because of who he is, yes. even though I praise him because he's God all by himself, even though I praise him because cause, cause he's a God that, that sits high and looks low, yes. just like that one Samaritan that turned back. Sometimes I praise him uh, for what he does for me. <laughs> I find myself all the time praying that, that when he gives me a break to, I praise him all by myself. What are you talking about, brother preacher? Well, when I opened my eyes this morning, I knew he allowed me to see another day. Right. And that's why right. I praise him. Uh, when I go out, got out of my bed, he allowed me to put one foot in front of the other. Uh, that's why I praise him. When I got, got to my closet, he allowed me to put my own clothes on under my own strength. That's why I praise him. As I roamed around the house, there was no evidence of break-ins. I saw the kids sleeping and slumbering in the very ends of death, but I saw their belly moving, breathing in and exhaling out. That's why I praise him. I, I looked up and had a roof over my head. That's why I praise my man. I'm walking down somebody's street. I looked in the icebox. 
starts. Young folks, you don't know what that is, but keep on living. And I had food to put on my table. That's why I praise him. I walked down and started a cry I didn't deserve. That's why I praise him. I was able to make it hot if it was cold. I was able to make it cold when it was hot. That's why I praise him. I was able to hit a button and listen to somebody else praise the Lord with my own ears. That's why I praise him. And when I made it to the house of the Lord, Satan, I was thankful because I made it and somebody did not make it. Yes, yes, and that's why I praise him. And just about the time I got to walking up to the doors, I, I know for a fact that I was full of praise. I had many things to thank God for. I'm able to say with a pure heart, thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for me. You've been better to me than I've been to myself. Thank you for keeping me. Thank you for coming and, and seeing about me. Thank you, Lord, for stopping by when I was sick. When I was sick, thank you, Bob, for, for Lord, for stopping by when I was lonely. Thank you, Lord, for stopping by and coming and seeing about me when I couldn't see my way through. When, when, when I prayed for my family, you stopped by and made sure everything was all right. When, when, when I needed help, you were there for me. When you, you stopped by and you talked to me and let me know that I was your own. Thank you, Lord. Stopping by when they lied on me. Stopping by when they turned their backs on me. And thank you, Lord, for stopping by the point of my salvation when I should have been on that cross. Bleed and die for the sins I committed. But you said, no, no. Look at the cross. And he walked up to the cross. Stretch his hands wide and allowed him to put nails in his hands and nails in his feet. And he and he allowed him to be crucified. And he went in, and was put in a barber tomb and stayed in the in the grave all night Friday night. Stayed in the grave all night Saturday night. But early Sunday morning. He, he, he completed a promise and said, Where I go, you may go also. And he went to prepare a place for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I, what I like about that place that God prepared for me, that Christ uh, prepared for me, is that it's there. Yeah. Whether I make it or not, you can't sit in my seat. He prepared it for me. It don't matter if I'm early or if I'm late, if I'm a baby or if I'm grown. Yeah, 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 yeah. you can't sit there. Well, yeah, they got a Hershey named Michael, and he will kindly escort you from my seat. <laughs> it don't matter how much you pay for your reservation. Yeah, 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 because I had somebody pay for my reservation with the blood. That drip warm from the veins, and that table was washed. <laughs> and you can't sit there. Thank you, Lord. Getting up from a chilly, cold grave and rising with all power in your hands. Thank you, I should never forget what God has done for me. Somebody may have heard God's voice. And the Holy Spirit might be urging one to come. The doors of the church are now open. Family might have been trying to help you and they were frustrated and seemed like they're giving up on you because you made the same mistake over and over and over and over and over and over again. But this time, something different. If you're feeling the urging of the Holy Spirit, we invite you to come.
direction so that we can help those that you sent by our way. We ask that you keep us, Lord, for we cannot keep ourselves. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us now.